alcohol. This is an example of how a person can be a slave to other than Allah. What was the relationship between the Arab man before Islam and alcohol? If you look into their poetry and their addiction and obsession with alcohol, you will find that it was near enough a master-slave relationship. Whatever the alcohol wants from you, they would do it. Whenever the urge to drink would come, they would respond to it. The, the idea of alcohol formed their ambitions in life. It formed their out, outlook. It changed their vision. It changed everything. Whatever alcohol wanted from them, they would respond. So they virtually became an, al an al alcoholics, people who were addicted to it. However, Islam has come and prohibited alcohol. Why? To ensure that your tawheed is preserved. To ensure that your slavery is to Allah and Allah alone. See, the prohibition of alcohol is not simply because it intoxicates the mind, it gives you a headache, it makes you sick, it makes you fornicate with, with family and whatnot. These are some reasons, right? But if that was the only reason why alcohol was prohibited, then our Sharia would have said to us, it's okay if you drink alcohol, just maybe a glass full. But don't drink a bottle. Don't drink to a level where you will become intoxicated, correct? But we know in our deen that drinking a drop of alcohol and a bottle is the same. Therefore, we understand that the wisdom behind the prohibition of alcohol is something other than just intoxication. It is fundamentally to preserve your tawheed, your oneness, your, your, the oneness of your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that you don't become enslaved to it. That is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, as was narrated by Ibn Abbas with an authentic chain of narration, man mata wa huwa mudminu khamrin, Whoever dies as an alcoholic, he said, will meet Allah Almighty as if he had worshipped an idol. Do you, do you see the link between alcohol and worshipping an idol? What is the link? The link is that master-slave relationship. Therefore, the, the cornerstone of why alcohol was forbidden was to preserve your tawheed that you adore and you are enslaved to only Allah Almighty, but alcohol can change that. So it, for, it was forbidden. I now take you to the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, on the authority of the companion Abi Malik in Al-Ash'ari, listen. لَيَكُونَنَّ مِنْ أُمَّتِي أَقْوَامٌ يَسْتَحِلُّونَ الْحِرَى وَالْحَرِيرَى وَالْخَمْرَى وَالْمَعَازِفْ There will come a time where a group of Muslims from my ummah will deem alcohol and fornication and musical instruments and silk as permissible. Doesn't this hadith increase us in our love of the Prophet and our certainty in his prophethood and nubuwah? Look at how he singles out alcohol and music and fornication because their manipulative properties are incredible. These are the tools of shaitan that he uses to move people away from the slavery of Allah to the slavery of man and the slavery of his desires.